Oh, girl, let's talk spooks. Okay, so as previously mentioned in my last update video, um, I recently moved away from school, and this room that you're seeing right here is the room in the school's residence that I live in. Now, the history of this residence. Before I moved here, I knew briefly about it, but I didn't know the full extent of it. And honestly, if you had told past Sarah, who was trying to decide which school she was gonna go to, uh, what the f*** was going on here, homegirl would like be elsewhere. I'm really really excited to be telling you guys all the little creepy stories because I, I mean I do talk about it with a lot of the other people here but they experience the same thing and I just kind of want to tell you guys what's been going on, what kind of shit's been going down. So without further ado, let's get into it. So <laughs> I'm gonna read you guys quickly an overview of the history of the building that I am in right now. Uh, I'll insert a little picture so you can just kind of see like it already looks like a nightmare from the outside. Just wait till you find out the rest. So this building actually used to be a nun house. Not a nunnery, I've learned. A nunnery was like a whore house. Nun things are for actual like, hmm. The Great Nuns building has been home to the Great Nuns. Women in difficulty, the poor and needy of Montreal, orphaned children, wounded soldiers, and now students. It seems it may also be home to ghosts. In 1918, the Grey Nunnery, oh, I guess it is, I guess it is called a nunnery, huh? housed an orphanage on the top of the left wing, and sick and wounded soldiers on the lower levels. This was wartime, and Grey Nuns played a crucial role in sheltering those who had nowhere else to go. On the evening of Valentine's Day, a fire broke out on the top floor of the building, enshrouding the orphanage in smoke and flames. The top floor? is right above me. Yeah, so this used, this place used to be an orphanage and there were hundreds of kids, had nowhere to go, lived here and were taken care of by the nuns, as were many sick and wounded soldiers and just, and just overall people in sickness and in need. So not only was there this horrible tragic event that I'm about to tell you about, but, um, sorry, I keep touching my titties. <laughs> But this was also like a hospital, like many people just died here of sickness, of injury. Okay, this is a quote from the Montreal Gazette in 1970. The children, most of them infants, had been put to bed as usual at 5 o'clock. That's so damn early. The first flame seemed to shoot up through the floor of the dormitory near one of the windows. They caught the end of a curtain. In a few minutes, smoke and the stench of blister and paint were rolling through the rooms. 38 charred bodies were found by the firemen at 10.30. While firemen and soldiers were engaging in rescuing infants, they were forced to leave many to die as the flames and smoke drove the rescuers from the building. So, they only found 38 bodies, but there were about 200 kids who the firemen were just forced to leave to burn alive. Young children with no families staying here, just going to bed one night, woke up to just being engulfed in flames and being burned alive. Every time a YouTuber talks about something scary and they're like, I have chills, I'm like, bullshit, but like, we out here with chills, fam. The confirmed deaths was 53, because that's all the bodies they found, and it's still unknown how many other young children and babies were entirely cremated in the fire, the remains never having been found. So Donovan King, who graduated from the school that I'm in and also runs like the ghost tours in Montreal, which is also just overall a very freaking haunted city, just because the history of this place is very violent. I actually have yet to go on the ghost tour. It's something I'm really interested in and we will see. The guy, Donovan King, came around the school a couple years back, was asking a few people if they've had any paranormal experiences here. One student who had been living in the residence said she had been having nightmares every night about dead children. She would hear trampling noises and have bad visions associated with this. And as soon as she moved out, she stopped having these nightmares. Oh, so also, a section of this building, I think it's literally right there, um, is a daycare. And kids come here throughout the week. The first time I had read about the history of like the children of the fire, I, I didn't know that there was a daycare here. I was woken up really early in the morning to the sound of screaming kids. Like what sounded like, a do like dozens of them just screaming kids and I was so petrified and I couldn't believe that I was hearing it till I looked out the window and I saw that the daycare playground's right there so like the kids were like up for recess and like screaming and stuff but it scared the living crap out of me because I really thought I was like hallucinating orphans. I don't know. Apparently two of the children in the daycare, so in the daycare right there, had made the same imaginary friend 
who fit the description of the orphan. Both children in the daycare had individually described this friend as having like a tattered hat and ripped, charred, burnt clothes. Yeah. And also, so on the corner of Guy et René Lévesque, <laughs> René Lévesque is right there. Guy, I believe, is like right there. The intersection right here. So literally right fucking... What the fuck? So literally right there. So they're screaming kids this way, and then right there, on the corner, right there, facing out into the street, is this really large cross. So there was a farmer named Jean-Baptiste Goyer. Um, his neighbors, Jean Favre and Mary Anne Bastien, were very successful farmers and this other guy was very poor. One day, Goye told his neighbors that he was taking a trip to Quebec City, which was a very long trip at the time. This is back in the 1750s. So while he was away, Favre and Bastien were brutally murdered and their property was like just completely robbed, it was looted. Um, so when he returned a couple weeks later, he expressed like sheer horror at the murders and he became really strangely obsessed with the case. Because of this really erratic behavior, uh, Goye became the prime suspect and was arrested. This is back in the day of like torture methods. The way they used to get the truth out of criminals back in this day is they would nail their legs to like a plank of wood and the pain would be so unbearable that they would have no choice but to confess. So Goye confessed under all the pain um, that instead of going to Quebec City, he had snuck into their home in the middle of the night, stabbed Favre and his wife, and he was executed by means of a torture wheel. He was on a torture wheel, and the torturer would smash their limbs apart with a hammer between the gaps of the wheel. The corner right here is where that all happened. The cross was erected on the spot as a warning to others to not commit such a heinous crime. Now, this story is relevant, and I'll explain why in a bit. So now that you know the whole history of the building, let's get into my stories. I am very, very open to the idea of the spiritual world and the idea of, like, ghost presence. However, when I moved here and read about this, I didn't right off the bat think, I'm gonna experience things. I'm totally- this place is so haunted, like, I'm definitely gonna experience things. I kind of just took it for what it was, and I didn't really want to make any kind of accidental manifestations and I didn't want to like, I didn't want to attract anything. I have always lived in very new homes. Like where I'm from back in Toronto is a really, really new area. It was like a new property. So like I've never ever lived in a house where there has been any kind of history like that behind it. So this was really new for me. So I was very intrigued. But again, I was verily, 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 uh, verily. I was very mentally conscious to not try and evoke anything or bring anything about. I just kind of took this information for what it was and I went on with my life. I'm gonna go chronologically because you'll kind of get the idea of how things began to snowball, if you will. Within the first, literally the first night that I stayed in this bed, in this room in this building, I had instantly just f***ed up dreams. One thing that I have noticed about myself, and I've said many times to others, I didn't really dream anything scary. Uh, until I moved here, I had not had a nightmare, or at least one that I remembered, for at least five or six years. Um, why now? Why like this? If you want to talk to me, you should have picked up my call before, damn. I'm busy and sh my dreams have always been very, very, very rational. It's as though I'm just playing back memories, something very, very simple, such as like, I went and got sushi in my dream. Only some that were slightly abstract, but other than that, very, very normal dreams. Just want to emphasize that. First night I slept here, I had a dream that I floated up out of my body and began to just travel this way, like through the walls, through all the walls to the outside. I was traveling into my neighbor's rooms and I was like watching them sleep and never in my life have I astral projected or had anything like that happen to me, especially in my, or like in my dreams, in my sleep, nothing like that. It was the most sensational, strange thing that I've experienced in my sleep. But it was crazy, like I was just traveling right through the walls and looking down at people in the bed. Pretty much every night now, I have like weird f dreams. A lot of them I don't remember, but some of them I do, and they're just dark overall. Like they just deal with like dark concepts, and that's never really happened. And like I'll wake up from the nightmares, and that hasn't happened since I was like at least seven or eight years old. So yeah, my dreams just instantly got 
weird. They got freaky as soon as I moved here. I don't really know what could attribute to that other than there being kind of a paranormal like spiritual vibe happening here where like the energy is really heavy and it really affects me. I've talked about this before but I am like an empath. I am an indigo. I'm very very <gasps> What the f you scared? I'm talking about ghosts. Why would you barge in like that? Bring the wine. I'm stressed out. Okay. The next story I'm going to tell you um, also has to do with sleep. It's got to be one of the eeriest and most confusing things that's ever happened to me. Maybe a week or two after I moved in here, um, whenever I would wake up, I would notice that I was covered in bites, like bug bites, um, all down my back and down my legs. I like I talked to a couple people about it and they said they look like bed bug bites and they seem like bed bug bites. So I inspected my entire mattress, I inspected all the cracks and the creases and everything and I didn't see, I laid a bunch of traps, I didn't see any and none ended up in the traps even if I would leave my room for like a day or two. After I first noticed this, a couple nights later, I would just be strangely and randomly woken up at like two, three in the morning, I would just be like, I would just wake up for no reason. And I would look to either side of me and I would notice two or more at a time, spiders <laughs> crawl out of my sheets, across my body and then disappear. Or I would see them on my walls. I would see like three of them just crawl and then run into like a crack somewhere and disappear. On the furnace, uh, but mainly coming out from under these sheets. I have respect for all beings. I'm vegan as fuck and I don't ever like to kill bugs and I try not to be fearful of them because they're just creatures occupying the same space as I am and they don't do anything to harm me. So I bought like, actually I still have them, hold <laughs> on. I bought these little spider traps and I laid them on every single corner of my bed, all along the furnace, in every corner of my room, everywhere on the floor, under my bed. My entire room was just filled with these little traps. But after having these in my room for at least a week, there was nothing in any of them. There's still nothing in any of them, like, <laughs> well, I mean, there's some dust, but that's about it. And I would never see the spiders in the day, anywhere else, any other time, until I would be woken up randomly at 3 a.m. and I would see one crawling on me or on the walls. At that point, that's a little scary and I have to just forget all my peaceful kumbaya vegan shit. and I contacted the residence manager here. And I was like, hey girl, listen up, I'm getting bit. I think it's bed bugs or spider bites, but I don't know, is there anything you can do? Is there anything you can check in my room? Can you bring someone in to investigate either my bed for bed bugs or just my room for like a spider nest? Because this is an excessive amount of spiders. And also, why are they crawling out of my sheets? She emails me back and she says, I have received word that you were concerned about potential bed bugs in your room. To this date, we have never had a bed bug situation in this residence. Very likely not bed bugs. We don't want to cause a scare in residence. Um, however, we do take these concerns seriously and would like to proceed as such. First, you'll need to go to health services and be checked for any signs of bed bugs on you. I will have facilities management come by your room with a residence life staff member to inspect your room and bed. So I went to health services. And the nurse was very confused. She's like, these kind of look like bed bugs, but like not any that I've seen before. They don't look like spider bites either. Like, she was so uncertain. She's like, I guess they're bed bugs. I'm like, please just say they are because I just want, because like basically what, what this manager said was like, if the nurse says they're not bed bugs, then I don't have a bed bugs problem and we will not proceed any further. I was just like, please tell her like, that they are bed bugs because I just want some someone to come check out the situation and like see. The exterminator comes in. Um, I moved to a temporary room for like a couple of days. I was losing so much sleep, you guys, you don't understand. When I would wake up at 3 a.m. and see spiders crawling across my chest, I would look down and see a spider or see a spider crawling up here. It gave me beyond heebie-jeebies and I would grab my pillow and I would go to the common room, like the little living room here, and I would sleep on the couch because I am not sleeping in a spider infested bed or any bug infested bed for that matter and I was still waking up with so many bites on me and I also thought it was weird because spiders don't bite that much like 
I've gotten spider bites before. Like, I've been camping tons, and like, they usually swell up more, and they're like, kind of like lumpy. Not like 20 times, and I had like 20 bites. I just had so many bites on me, and it was so ugly. Like, I still have so many scars. Basically, the exterminator comes in, puts basically like a trap for bed bugs, or like a detector to see if there's bed bugs in the vicinity. There's like basically like a thing of powder, and like they're super drawn to the powder, so that so four or five days pass, no signs of bed bugs. Basically, I get an email from the manager saying, your room's clear to go, like enjoy. And I've been living in here ever since. But as this whole dilemma was going on, I was telling people, and one girl actually told me that like demons take on the forms of things that you were scared of. I mean, I'm not terrified of spiders. I don't like them. I wouldn't prefer them crawling on me in my sleep. That makes me very uncomfortable. It broke me down to tears a lot. If I'm not seeing them any other time but like 3 a.m., the demonic hour, like that's a pretty clear sign that it could be some demonic presence. Y'all know what I did up in this? Sage is like my favorite tool to use, like my favorite protecting and uplifting tool. Well, it actually neutralizes the environment. And then one of my coworkers from back home who I love gave me this little piece of a tree. So sage neutralizes the environment and this actually uplifts it further. And I did that and I said a couple of prayers and like set my intention and basically tried to clear the room of any negative energy and I like sent it all out the window and I'm like, hey demons, it's your girl. Please go, you're not paying rent, I am. And ever since I did that, I haven't had a single problem since. I have not seen a single spider in my room. Not a single one. I have not gotten a single bite since then. And I can't help but wonder, like, were those spiders really like an evil energy and did I just so happen to successfully clear my room of it? I don't know, but it was f***ed up. I'm so thankful that that situation's over. But let's move on to the next situation, shall we? This next story um, is not something that's happened to me, but it's happened to a couple people that I know living in this building as well. And one of those is my friend John. And you guys know John, he's been on my channel a couple times before. These people have woken up around 3 a.m. and have seen a very tall, disfigured man shadow person and i personally believe it to be the ghost of jean baptiste goyer who i talked about in the beginning of the video who committed the horrible murder and the cross that was put up to warn others not to commit such crimes there are many theories that he's also buried underneath that cross so there's a literal murder buried on this resident's property Anyways, I'm gonna bring John in and he's gonna tell you the story. I brought him in here to share his experience with seeing this man. Take it away, Johnny Boy. I think the time that you're most susceptible to spirits is- It's three in the morning. It's like between two and three. Uh, and I remember I was like laying in bed and I look up and there's this like really tall, like gray figure with like a really long face just near my closet and I like, I just stared at it. The weird part was is that I felt like it wasn't like a negative or hostile energy, but it was also scared and confused. It just looked like if someone had stretched it. Like its face was really long and its shoulders were very distended and very long arms. And it just stood there with its mouth gaping open open and its eyes were like pure white and a couple other people like we've shared stories and they've seen the exact same thing they've seen i have never experienced seeing like, a shadow person or like any kind of figure thank god like knock on wood like i never want to what's weird though scary. Is, yeah what's weird is that the girl i was talking about it who saw the same thing was also on my floor and she's like just a hallway down so, so i strange. actually have a theory surrounding this man <laughs> He was like tortured to what, death. It was like the. It could have explained why he it was his like arms, arms and his distended. I don't think he's yeah. transferred Which, over to the other side, and I think that could be a, like the confusion could be a result. It, it ghosts, man. Okay, the last and final paranormal story I have for now has got to be the craziest thing that's ever happened to me in terms of my dreams. Okay. Three or four weeks ago, I woke up around like 9 a.m. okay and like i was up i was awake i was like super energized i started doing homework like i was actually like ready for the day but all of a sudden i had a really really like sudden rush of exhaustion and i just had to sleep so i just like went to sit in my bed i laid down and i passed the f out that rarely happens unless i'm super exhausted okay i had a dream that i was walking 
somewhere along like a highway or a really busy intersection with my family and not just like my mom my dad my sister my brother but like my extended family too like my aunts my uncles my cousins my grandparents the whole lot and we were all trying to like cross a really busy intersection the hill like the, this road kind of went from like a higher like plateau and like we were crossing at the bottom of the hill it was supposed to be like a red light i guess because we could cross but cars at like 80 90 kilometers an hour started rushing towards my family crossing the road so i'm already on the other side my perspective is watching my family cross so i see like my mom and dad go they both get hit my little brother and my little cousin cross they're just like skipping across the road they just get obliterated by this car my aunts uncles cousins are all just getting hit by these cars coming at lightning speed like, i'm very distressed in my dream i turn around to see my grandpa on a bike so for some reason the man just went from walking and he hopped on a bike and he's like trying to bike around the corner so like he's passing me and so i very distinctly see him on a bike and one of the cars comes and hits him and he falls onto his hand and his wrist snaps and then i woke up and i was like what the fuck it's such a screwed up dream like i was really really disturbed by the dream for the rest of the day usually if i have a screwed up dream i can just forget about it but I, maybe it was because it was like my family that it really affected me all day fast forward to two weeks later i was home for thanksgiving that was two weekends ago i was home for thanksgiving and i was sitting in the kitchen and my dad was on the phone with my grandma <sighs> I'm sure some of you know where this is going. Like, and at the time, we were both on vacation in Italy. My grandma had just called to inform my dad that my grandpa was riding a bike on a busy intersection. A car hit him and he fell and broke his wrist. Two weeks after I had that dream. It was the most chilling thing and like, I don't know. I mean, he's okay now. He's getting better. I think he fell again after because he was drunk at a vineyard and broke it again. Um, but he's okay. But that was seriously the craziest psychic dream that I've ever had. Okay, one more thing before I go. So like I said at the beginning of this video, this building used to be a nun house. Um, there were many, many nuns that worked and lived here. And I think the policy for like being a nun is that you are to be buried in the same place that you like worked or served as a nun. I'm not really sure how it works, I'm not a nun. Downstairs on the first floor of my building, like right beside my cafeteria where I eat, is where 300 nuns are still buried to this day. And we are actually gonna go take a look at the graves. When this building converted to a school residence, obviously you'd think that like they would perhaps relocate the dead bodies on like the floor where a lot of students live and where we eat you would think however because this was back in like, the 18th 19th century most of these nuns died of some horrible contagious bubonic ass disease and it's actually an extreme health hazard to, to dig them up because of the contagious illnesses that could spread in the air and shit like uh. and supposedly on halloween the people in charge of this building actually open up the doors so that you are able to go in and walk around. I'm not sure if that's true or just a rumor, but if it's true, you guys know I will take you. I will vlog the whole thing. But yeah, let's go take a look. This is the door to the graves. The crack is very, very small, but I'll still try and show you as well. Okay, I know this video was super long. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me and listening to my creepy stories. Again, I'm not taking anything too seriously. I'm just sharing with you what I experienced. I'm not I'm not gonna like presume it is or is not anything. And all I can ask for is that the demons leave me alone and that I can continue to live a peaceful life out here in Montreal. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd love to hear back from you. Make sure to subscribe. Please make sure you guys subscribe to my channel because there could potentially be some more creepy stories like this If the nuns don't feel like leaving me alone quite yet. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon